Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will solve another exercise on loops. So here is the exercise. The Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of numbers where the first two numbers in the sequence are 1 and 1. And then each additional Fibonacci number is the sum of the two previous numbers in the sequence. So the sequence will look like something like this. The first two numbers are 1 and 1. And the number over here is the sum of 1 and 1. So we have 2. Then the number after that is the sum of 1 and 2, so we have 3. Then 2 plus 3 will give us 5, and 3 plus 5 will give us 8, and so on, alright? So we want to write a program that reads an integer n and displays the nth Fibonacci number. So for example, if n is equal to 1, or if n is equal to 2, then our program should display 1, because the first Fibonacci number and the second Fibonacci number are equal to 1. If n is equal to 6, then our program should display 8 because 8 is the 6th Fibonacci number, and so on, right? So in other words, our program needs to do some calculations and calculate the nth Fibonacci number. We are only going to store the first two numbers, and we are going to calculate the nth Fibonacci number. So I want you to pause the video and try to solve this exercise. So let's have a look at our solution. As we said, we are going to store only the first two numbers, and we are going to calculate the nth Fibonacci number. So suppose that the user enters the number 4. So the user wants the 4th Fibonacci number. So he wants this number over here. So as you can see, to get this number, we should calculate the sum of this number and this number. So before getting this number over here, we should get this number, right? And we already know how to get this number over here. All we have to do is to add 1 and 1. So this is the first step. We are going to say 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So now we have this number over here. And after that, we are going to say 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So now we have this number over here. So we have the fourth Fibonacci number. And this is the result that we want to display for the user. Now notice that to get the fourth Fibonacci number, we did two steps, right? So as you can see, when n is equal to 4, we have two operations, this one and this one. Let's see another example. Suppose that n is equal to 6. So first of all, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So we have this number. And after that, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So we have this number over here. And after that, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So we have this number. And finally, 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. So we have this number over here. So to get the 6th Fibonacci number, we did 4 steps. So we have 4 operations over here. So now we can conclude that to get the nth Fibonacci number, we need n minus 2 steps, alright? So we are going to perform some operations inside a loop, and this loop is going to run for n minus 2 iterations, alright? Now let's see how we are going to program the solution. So as you can see, this is the first example, n is equal to 4. Now let's suppose that we have two variables, v1 and v2. First of all, v1 is equal to 1, and v2 is equal to 1, okay? These are the first two elements in the sequence. So to get this number over here, we are adding v1 and v2, so we have 2. So this is the third Fibonacci number. We want to get the fourth Fibonacci number, right? So look what we're going to do. V2 will be equal to 2 and V1 will be equal to this number over here. And now we will do the same thing. We are going to add V1 and V2. So 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So now we have this number over here. And if we want to continue, we will do the same thing. V2 will be equal to 3 and V1 will be equal to 2. And after that, we are going to add V1 and V2. So in this case, we have 5. So we will have this number over here. But of course, in this case, we only want this number because this is the fourth Fibonacci number, okay? And this operation will continue. V1 will be equal to this number and V2 will be equal to this number and we will keep adding the values. So this is our solution. Now you might be asking, how are we going to move V1 and V2 to be like this? So let's see this example. Suppose that V1 is equal to 2 and V2 is equal to 3 then this value over here will be stored inside a variable called result, for example. So first of all, we are going to say result is equal to v1 plus v2. So in this case, result will be equal to 5, okay? Now after that, we want to move v1 to be equal to v2. So we are going to say v1 is equal to v2. So we are going to store the value of v2 inside v1. So after executing this statement, v1 will be equal to 3, all right? And at this point, v2 is still equal to 3 also, all right? So now we want v2 to be equal to 5. So we are going to say v2 is equal to result. So store result inside v2. So now v2 will be equal to 5. And also result is still equal to 5. 
But what's important to us over here is now v1 is equal to 3 and v2 is equal to 5. So if we re-execute this code over here, result will be equal to 3 plus 5. So now result will be equal to 8 and so on, all right? And remember, we want to execute this code n minus 2 times. Now let's have a look at this note over here. The order of these operations is important. So first of all, we have result is equal to v1 plus v2. So 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, okay? Now what if we say v2 is equal to result? So in this case, v2 will be equal to 5. And after that, you are saying v1 is equal to v2. So v1 will also be equal to 5. So as you can see, v1 is not equal to 3. So as I said, the order of these statements is important. So now let's go to IntelliJ. So first of all, we are telling the user to enter a positive integer n, and we are storing it inside a variable called n, alright? So now as we said, we want to run a loop n minus 2 iterations. So let's use a for loop. And in here, we're going to have a variable i starting from 1, for example. And to run n minus 2 iterations, i should be less than or equal to n minus 2. And after that, we will increment i by 1. So in this loop, we are iterating n minus 2 iterations. Now, what do we want to do? Each time, we want to assign a variable result to be equal to v1 plus v2. So let's create result and v1 and v2. Over here, I'm going to say int result is equal to 0, for example. This value doesn't matter at this point. And also we have v1, which is equal to 1, and also v2, which is also equal to 1, okay? These are our first two elements, okay? Now inside the loop, we will set the result to be equal to v1 plus v2. And after that, v1 will be equal to the value of v2, and v2 will be equal to our result. And this is it. This is exactly what we explained in the slides. Now after this loop finishes executing, we will have our result in the variable result. So let's print for example, result is equal to, and let's concatenate result, all right? Let's run the program. So let's say we want the 10th Fibonacci number. Press enter, and as you can see, it is 55, and this is correct. Let's run the program again. Let's say we want the third Fibonacci number. Press enter, and as you can see, it is equal to two, and this is correct. One more example. Let's say we want the 6th Fibonacci number. Press enter, and as you can see, it is equal to 8. Now, right now, we have a small problem in our program. For example, run the program, and let's try to get the 2nd Fibonacci number. As you can see, result is equal to 0. Run the program again, and let's try to get the 1st Fibonacci number. Press enter, and as you can see, also the result is equal to 0. So in this case, our program is not correct. So what's happening exactly? As you saw over here, I initialized the result to be equal to 0. And if n is equal to 1, or if n is equal to 2, this loop over here will not be executed. Suppose that n is equal to 2. Then over here we have 2 minus 2, so this is 0, right? And i is starting from 1. So is 1 less than or equal to 0? This is false. So we are not going to execute the loop, and we are going to print 0 over here. Now suppose that n is equal to 1. So over here we have 1 minus 2. So this value over here will be minus 1. And i starts at 1. So is 1 less than or equal to minus 1? No, this is false. So similarly, this loop will not be executed and we are going to print 0. So to fix this problem, let's use a ternary operator over here. Let's say if result is equal to 0, then we want to print 1. And if it is not equal to 0, we want to print result. And as you can see, we have an error. So let's surround the ternary operator with some parentheses. And now the error is gone, all right? So now, if this loop wasn't executed, this means that n is equal to 1 or 2. So in this case, result will be equal to 0, so we are going to print 1. And if this loop was executed, this means that n is different than 1 and it is different than 2. So this condition over here will be false because the result will not be equal to 0. So we are going to print result. So let's try the program. So let's say we want the second Fibonacci number. As you can see, the result is 1. Run the program again. Let's say we want the first Fibonacci number, press enter and also the result is 1. And now let's say we want the 5th Fibonacci number, and as you can see we have 5, and this is correct. Run again, let's say we want the 7th Fibonacci number, press enter, and we have 13, alright? So this is it, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.